Hi, I'm Florence. Before I dive into my story, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more tales like this one. Now, let's get started. Life was pretty sweet for me as a 46-year-old housewife. With my savvy investments over the years, I enjoyed a serene and comfortable lifestyle with my husband, Anthony, and our lovely daughter, Marion. Our home was filled with laughter and love, and every corner reflected the stability and care we had built over the years. One sunny afternoon, as I was arranging fresh flowers in the foyer, the unexpected sound of the doorbell echoed through the house. Peering through the peephole, my eyes widened in surprise. Standing on the doorstep were my half-sister, Cora, and her husband, Jack. Cora looked visibly pregnant and weary, while Jack carried their luggage with a strained expression. Opening the door, I greeted them with cautious warmth. Cora, Jack, what brings you here? Cora brushed past me without much of a greeting, her eyes scanning our well-kept home. Florence, we need a place to stay, just for a little while, you know, until the baby comes and we sort things out. I glanced at Anthony, seeking his input. His eyes were filled with an unspoken plea, reflecting his affection for Cora. After a brief, tense pause, he chimed in. Let's help them out, Florence. Family is family, right? Reluctantly, I nodded, masking my hesitation with a forced smile. Of course, you're welcome to stay as long as you need. As the days turned into weeks, Cora and Jack made themselves more than comfortable. Cora frequently directed demands towards me, each more unreasonable than the last. Florence, could you clear out the guest room closet? We need more space for the baby's things. During dinner one evening, as Marion recounted her school day, Cora interrupted with another demand. Florence, I was thinking, maybe it would be better if Jack and I moved into your bedroom. It's much larger, and I need the space to feel more comfortable during my pregnancy. I nearly choked on my water, catching Anthony's eye across the table. His gaze dropped quickly to his plate, avoiding confrontation. Gathering my thoughts, I responded as calmly as I could. I don't think that would be necessary, Cora. The guest room is quite spacious. Cora's lips twisted into a frown, her tone laced with manipulation. But Florence, don't you want the best for me and your future niece or nephew? I thought family looked out for each other. The weeks dragged on, and with each passing day, Cora's true colors showed more vividly. Her manipulations became more overt, and Anthony's inexplicable support for her wore thin my patience and trust. It felt like the walls of my own home were closing in on me, pushing me out of the picture I had so lovingly painted over the years. As I lay in bed one night, listening to the whispers from the next room, the weight of their presence in our home pressed down on me like a heavy fog. I realized that something needed to change, but what? I wasn't quite sure yet. All I knew was that the serene beginning of my story was about to take a turn into an unexpected chapter, filled with challenges and revelations that would test the very foundations of my family. As the weeks passed, the tension in our house built up like steam in a closed kettle. Cora's demands grew not just in frequency, but in audacity, while Jack mostly kept to himself, occasionally backing up his wife with little more than a nod or a grunt. One lazy Saturday morning, I found Cora rearranging the living room. She had moved the furniture and was measuring the walls. What are you doing, Cora? I asked, trying to keep my voice light despite the irritation bubbling inside me. We need more room for the baby's play area. I'm thinking your antique cabinet would look better in the basement. It's just taking up space that we can use, Cora replied, not even pausing her measurements. Actually, Cora, that cabinet is a family heirloom. I'd prefer it stayed right where it is, I said, my tone firmer this time. Jack walked in, his brows raised in mock surprise. Come on, Florence, we're all family here. What's a piece of furniture compared to family comfort? I sighed feeling the weight of their presence more acutely than ever. The conversation paused as Anthony entered the room. Seeing the scene, he placed his hand on my shoulder, a gesture that once comforted me, but now felt like a pat of dismissal. Florecne, maybe Cora has a point. The baby will need space to play, and we can manage without some things for a while, Anthony said, siding yet again with Cora. I pulled away slightly, looking him directly in the eye. And where does it end, Anthony? Do we move out our entire lives for temporary convenience? Cora laughed softly, a sound that grated on my nerves. Actually, I was thinking about that. Florence, why don't you consider moving into a smaller apartment temporarily? 
It would give us more space here. And you could use a little break, couldn't you? The suggestion was so outrageous that for a moment, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. My home, the place I had poured my heart and soul into, was now being casually reassigned by someone who hadn't even contributed a cent to its upkeep. And where would Marion and I go, Cora? Why should we leave our home? I asked, my voice rising despite my attempt to control it. Anthony stepped in, his voice a forced calm. It's just a thought, Florence, for family. We need to support Cora during her pregnancy. I turned away from them, feeling a sting in my eyes. This was not just about space or convenience. It was a deliberate push to see how far they could go, how much I would endure. That night, I began documenting everything, each demand, every conversation. If my husband wouldn't see reason, I needed to prepare for what might come. I scribbled down notes, hiding them in a place only I knew about, my own little act of rebellion in a war I never chose to fight. As I wrote, I could hear Cora and Anthony laughing in the next room, their voices mingling in a way that made my heart sink. The rift between us was no longer a crack, but a chasm, one that threatened to swallow up everything I loved about my life. But I was not ready to give up. Not yet. This was my home, and I would fight for it, even if it meant standing alone against the very people who should have been my refuge. One evening, after a particularly long and exhausting day, I needed some paperwork from Anthony's study for my personal records. As I searched through the drawers, a small folded piece of paper caught my eye. Curious, I unfolded it and found a handwritten note from Cora to Anthony, filled with words no sister-in-law should ever write to her brother-in-law. My heart pounded as I read the intimate expressions and plans for future encounters. Stunned and shaking, I confronted Anthony when he came home. What is this? I demanded, thrusting the note in front of him. His face paled as he read, his eyes avoiding mine. It's not what it looks like, Florence. You're reading too much into it, Anthony muttered, trying to snatch the note back. Am I? Or have I been blind to what's been happening right under my own roof? I shot back, my voice quivering with anger and hurt. Anthony's response was dismissive, his tone cold and distant. You're being paranoid, Florence. Cora's just being affectionate. That's how she is. Affectionate? Anthony, these are not words of family affection. How long has this been going on? I pressed, needing to hear him deny it, to say it wasn't true. But Anthony just shook his head, frustration clear in his voice. I don't have to justify my relationship with my sister-in-law to you. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. His dismissal was like a slap in the face, feeling utterly betrayed and alone. I knew I couldn't stay any longer, not with the man who was supposed to be my partner, my protector. That night, while Anthony and Cora laughed over dinner, pretending everything was normal, I made my decision. I would leave, but not in defeat. Over the next few days, I acted with a calm I did not feel. I contacted my lawyer, revisited my investment portfolio, and ensured everything was locked down financially. I then transferred the house into my name only, an oversight Anthony had never bothered to rectify, trusting in my management of our finances. I arranged for a real estate agent to list the property the moment I was ready. As I packed my essentials, my thoughts were a whirlwind of hurt, anger, and determination. Each piece of clothing, each personal item, felt heavy with memories and significance. But with each item packed, I felt a step closer to freedom. Mama, are we going on a trip? Marion asked innocently as she saw me packing. Yes, sweetheart, just you and me. A little adventure, I replied forcing a smile. With everything set, I waited for the right moment. It came one rainy morning when Anthony and Cora had planned a day out. The house was silent and empty as I made my final rounds, a strange calm settling over me. I left behind the life I had known, the betrayal that had shattered my heart, and stepped out into the rain, ready to start anew. As I drove away, the rearview mirror framed the house that was no longer a home, a poignant reminder of what I was leaving behind and the uncertain yet hopeful road ahead. The day Cora and Anthony left for their trip was the day I set my plan into full motion. My hands shook as I dialed the real estate agent's number, the gravity of what I was about to do pressing down on me. Hello, this is Florence. We discussed the expedited sale of my property. Yes, I'd like to proceed immediately, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. 
The agent was efficient and understood the urgency. We can list it today and I'll start showing it tomorrow. Given the market, I expect you'll have offers by the end of the week. Make it happen, I instructed, feeling a mix of liberation and anxiety. As the days passed, offers came in just as the agent predicted. I accepted a generous offer, one that would secure my and Marion's future comfortably. The paperwork was a blur of signatures and legal jargon, but I made sure every detail was correct, every I dotted and every T crossed. With the house sold, I hired a moving company to pack up Cora's and Anthony's belongings and move them to a storage unit. I watched from a distance as their life was boxed up, a symbolic end to their intrusion into mine. The day they returned, I was long gone, but I imagined their shock as they found the empty house, a shell of the home it once was. The phone rang incessantly as Anthony tried to reach me, but I ignored every call. Finally, I picked up, my resolve like steel. Why, Florence? How could you do this to us? Anthony's voice was a mixture of anger and bewilderment. I did what was necessary, Anthony. For my sanity. For my daughter's future. You and Cora made your choice, and I made mine, I replied, my voice void of the affection that once colored our conversations. But where are we supposed to go? What about us? He pleaded, the desperation clear in his tone. That's no longer my concern. You should have thought about that before you betrayed me, I said coldly, the finality in my voice marking the end of our relationship. But the house, it was our home. Anthony trailed off, the realization of the finality probably sinking in. It was my home before it was ours, Anthony. I've returned it to just mine. You and Cora will have to find another place to call home, I stated matter-of-factly. There was a heavy silence on the line, a silence filled with the weight of lost opportunities and broken trust. You'll regret this, Florence. You can't just... Anthony's voice was cut off as I hung up the phone, his threats empty to my ears. As I ended the call, a sense of profound relief washed over me. I had navigated the storm they brought into my life and emerged on the other side, not unscathed, but undoubtedly stronger. The chapter of my life that included Anthony and Cora was closed, sealed with the sale of the house and the transfer of their belongings to a place where I would never have to see them again. I was free, and with freedom came a new beginning, one that I was ready to embrace with open arms and a clear conscience. The morning light spilled into the spacious living room of my new home, casting a warm glow on the fresh paint and untouched surfaces. As Marion explored her new room, her laughter echoed through the hallways, a sound of pure joy that had been missing for too long. As I unpacked a box of kitchenware, my phone buzzed relentlessly on the countertop. I knew without looking that it was Anthony, still trying to breach the fortress of silence I had built around us. I let it ring, my focus on the task at hand, on the fresh start that lay before me. Mama, look! I can see the park from my window! Marion called out her voice bubbling with excitement. That's wonderful, sweetheart. You'll make new friends in no time, I replied, my heart swelling with hope for both of our futures. Later that day, as I arranged the living room, the doorbell rang, a gentle, unassuming sound that still made my heart skip a beat. I peeked through the window and saw my old neighbor, Mrs. Jenkins, standing on the porch with a homemade pie in her hands. Opening the door, I greeted her with a warm smile. What a lovely surprise, Mrs. Jenkins. Come in, please. Florence, dear, I heard about everything. I just wanted to check on you and see how you're settling in, Mrs. Jenkins said as she stepped inside, her eyes taking in the new surroundings. We're doing just fine, thank you. It's a new beginning for us, and we're looking forward to it, I assured her, accepting the pie. As we sat down for tea, the conversation inevitably turned to Anthony and Cora. I can't believe they would do such a thing to you, Florence. How are you holding up? Mrs. Jenkins asked, her concern genuine. It was tough, but I realized that I had to stand up for myself and Marion. We deserve peace and happiness, and I'll do whatever it takes to ensure we have that, I said, my voice steady and confident. And Anthony? Is he still trying to get in touch? Mrs. Jenkins inquired, sipping her tea. Yes, he is, but I've made it clear that there's no going back. I've moved on, and it's time he did the same, I replied the finality in my voice echoing my resolve. Mrs. Jenkins nodded approvingly, setting down her cup. Good for you, Florence. You're a strong woman, and I've always admired that about you. The afternoon drifted by as we chatted, 
the comfort of an old friend's presence making the new house feel more like a home. After Mrs. Jenkins left, I took a moment to stand in the doorway, looking out at the quiet street. This neighborhood, this house, it was a blank canvas, a place where Marion and I could start anew, free from the shadows of the past. That night, as I tucked Marion into bed, her small hand gripped mine tightly. Mama, I like it here. I'm glad we have our own place again. Me too, honey. Just you and me, and a whole new world to explore, I whispered, kissing her forehead. Turning off the light, I walked to the living room and looked around at the boxes still to unpack, the pictures yet to be hung. There was work to be done, yes, but there was also a profound sense of peace that filled the space, the kind of peace that comes from knowing you've navigated through the storm and emerged into calm waters. As I sat down and looked out the window at the stars, I allowed myself to dream of the future, a future where Marion and I could thrive, unencumbered by the past. Cora and Jack's choices had led them to their own fates, and while I hoped they found their way, my path was clear, and it led forward, always forward. And that brings us to the end of Florence's journey. What do you think about Florence's decision to take such drastic measures against Anthony and Cora? Was it justified, or could there have been a better way to handle the betrayal? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to the channel for more compelling tales. Your engagement helps us grow and continue to bring you more content like this. Thank you for watching.